Hi, I'm going to show you how to run RStudio on Bianca. And with Bianca, I mean the Upmax HPC cluster for sensitive data. And because she has sensitive data, it will be hard to log in to her. So the procedure has five steps. First, we have to get within SUNET, the, like the university network. For that, I use a VPN. Uh, because I'm outside of uh, SUNET now, so I have to start a VPN from Uppsala University in this case. And um, this gives me like virtual private network inside SUNET. So I have to use my Uppsala University password here, so I'll type it in now. So now I am within SUNET uh, when how Bianca is concerned, because my uh, internet traffic will be going through that VPN uh, and that is within SUNET. Next time is the next step is to start Bianca's remote desktop environment. So I always forget where the URL is, but luckily there's a link here to some basic course material, how to log into Bianca. And there is the tab here, use the Max Bianca login website, click on that and click on that. And now this is the website to log into Bianca. So my max name is Richelle and I'm going to work on this project. I need to put my upmax password there. So the thing I use to log into Bianca or Rackham, uh, let's type it in now. And now I need my two factor authentication code. That is my upmax two factor authentication code. So I look at my uh, the, the app on my phone that manages this has to be the upmax one and I'll type it in 671445 and now I'll be logging in into Bianca. So I'm now halfway and um, now I only need to put in my upmax password to so already see Bianca's face here. Um, so my upmax password, let's type it in. There. And this will bring me to the remote desktop environment of Bianca. And I'm going to split the screens to reflect, to put, to be able to work side by side. So the next step on Bianca, so this is uh, Bianca, but from a remote desktop environment, I need to start an interactive session. So you can use, uh, you can use a command line command that starts with interactive. What I'll be doing, I have a file prepared for just that purpose. I will show that file. It's called startinteractive.shoom. This is a shell script and this is all it does. Uh, and you have to type this on the command line or run that script. So I will run that script, but you can type interactive dash capital A project code, uh, the number of nodes, the number of processes and the time you'll be using that interactive node. So I'll have to uh, run that script and you just saw at the top of my screen that I was disconnected from the VPN for a second. Um, that takes some seconds before I get to be logged in. Um, so when I'm back I can start this interactive. There she is. Start interactive. So now she, now I'm getting access to an interactive node and this can take literally dozens of minutes. So that I'm, I'm not going to talk all that time. I have started an interactive session and I'll be back when this is done. All right, see you soon.
right? So the job is uh, starting. It only took three and a half minutes. What is it? Nah, a bit less, but yeah, three and a half minutes. All right, so we're in an inter interactive session of Bianca now. It's still like starting up. And we're gonna double check if we are really on an interactive session. You do that using host name, and it shows the, the the host of your computer, and it means this B11 means that I'm on a calculation node of Bianca. That's what the B means, number 11. So yes, indeed, I'm on an interactive node. Now we need to load the modules we need. So those are first our packages and then our studio. So module, and I use the latest version here, our packages slash 4.3.1, our studio, also the S is capital, our studio slash 2023.06.2-561. So now, on the interactive node, I load the R packages, and that also includes R and R Studio. So those two modules are now there. Um, yeah, sure, there's some information when loading it, um, and it also says that the R Studio packages pane is disabled when loading this module due to R Studio slowdowns. All right, so that was step four, and now we start R Studio. So I'll use R Studio. And now it will start our studio. So our studio can be slow to start up because there are quite some packages that exist. Um, I have some people they have uh, they, they use a workspace as it's called, which saves the environment when you closed our studio. If you do that with very much big data, yeah, it needs to load all that data again. Um, so that makes it even slower. But although this looks looks a bit scary with all these errors, um, our studio is starting up. So uh, let's get rid of this output I just accidentally made. Um, and you also see that our studio will will, will show our studio in um, different phases. So first we'll show our studio without anything inside it. Then it will, and then it will gradually build up. So what I will demonstrate is to use the debugger too. So let's wait until this thing is done, which uh, um, oh, it's 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 uh, still starting up. So it's here. Um, so when this is done, I want to show some uh, debugging. But uh, yeah, this takes some time. So there our studio is now starting up. And you see that this the, the middle pane is still empty, but gradually this will build up too. Let's take a look in the terminal. There's nothing interesting there going on, but I'll just show you to kill a bit of time. Yes, excellent. So our studio is a program, is a it's an IDE and um integrate development environment and I'll be showing you the debugger and I have uh, already prepared some code for that I'm not going to show ggplot this time uh, yeah, I can, okay, I'll show some ggplot with control enter you can run a line and then I run this code and it creates a table and here at the bottom right it will show you the graph like it would show you uh, normally on your local computer but what I want to show you is the debugger. So to show the debugger, I'm going to write a function, uh, it's already written, called invert. And what it does, it um, inverts the number that's being passed. Like one, one divided by that number is the inverse. So maybe it should be called inverse. Now I call it invert. But of course, you cannot do a division by zero. So there's an, uh, an, an assertion called, uh, in this case, expect true, and it assumes that x is not equal to zero, else the function cannot work, and we should signal this very clearly. So at the bottom I've written, um, so, so this function invert, it's, it's well written function, it's maybe not documented too well, uh, we could all discuss that. 
So now imagine some code like this. Uh, that calls this invert function a couple of times. But when I run this, the program will crash. And now we run this line by line and it's very trivial to see when the function is called with an invalid number. Um, but we can also use the debugger with, for that. So we can, for example, click on rerun with debug. And then what we now see at the right is called the traceback or the call stack or whatever you want to call it. And here we see the functions that are in the process of being evaluated. So this function is uh, the error. This is, well, it doesn't, it's not very helpful. Yes, yeah, so at the bottom we see apparently the error. Here we see the expectation being false, what it gives, and this is the line where it happened. So now the debugger will show us where the error occurred. So in a big, so this is a very trivial example, but in a big program, um, the debugger can help you find out who did it uh, during runtime. All right, so that's very short uh, about uh, using the, uh, the debugger in R Studio. So we're going to stop this. I'm going to quit R Studio. I'm go not going to save this data. Um, yep, I'm going to exit my um, what's called interactive session. So if I do host name, this is an interactive session because I have dash B11. So I'm on the calculation node. If I do exit, um, now I will be on a regular on the, my login node. Uh, but also that I can quit and I will quit this program and I'm going to round off this video because I've showed you how to run RStudio on Bianca. I wish you a very good day. Bye.